Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. It is the 10th of August. It's Monday. I'm Peter Martin, Alan Ruff, Tom McManus and Alison McConnell are here with me. Delighted to have your company, guys. Uh, if you want to, you can like, share and follow us on Facebook and you can subscribe absolutely free to our YouTube channel. We'd love you to do that. Hopefully, Monday to Friday, you realise it's Scotland's number one football show. The figures are in. Thank you to everyone. It's not just uh, blusto from uh, a number of people in PR. It's just basically the truth. It's as simple as that. Lots to talk about. Of course, let's have a quick look at the divisional um, uh, what do you call it, draw for the uh, Betfred Cup, which has come out. Um, it's got a long way to go before we get to the exciting parts, but uh, for the north section, and uh, it's Harps, Inverness, Cowden, B3 Throwers and East Fife, and also St Johnston, Dundee United, Peterhead, Brecon City and Kelty Harps. And as you can see there in the next one, it's Hibs, Dundee, Forfar, Brora Rangers and Cove Rangers. Uh, and then over and above that, it is uh, Ross County, uh, are both Elgin City, Stirling Albion and Montrose. That's the north section of the draw. So the south section, yep, two big sections here. Kilmarnock, Dunfermline, Clyde, Dumbarton and Falkirk in E. St Mirren, Greenock, Morton, Queen of the South, Partick Thistle and Queen's Park in G. And then F is Hamilton, Ackies, Air United, Stranraer, Albion Rovers and Annan. And the final section, H, Livingston, Alloa, Stennis, Muir, Adrianians and Edinburgh City. Uh, of course, Celtic, Aberdeen, Motherwell and Rangers don't come in until the next section of it. So, um, overall, Ruffy, uh, quite an extensive draw. Long way to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's quite a good tournament. Uh, obviously, the, I think it's just the winners of each group go through and the, the four best losers. So you, you've still got a chance. You know, obviously you're up against the Premier League sides, but uh, as, as when we were in, it was very competitive. Uh, most of the games we played, and if you get through, it's it's another cup. It's a chance to get a wee run. You know, obviously supporters uh, won't be in at that time, but it's a chance if you can keep going. Supporters might be back in, so you get a wee bonus for it at the end of the day. And when Celtic Rangers come back in, if you get that far, you maybe get drawn against them. And as I said to you the last time, I, I think uh, good to drawn against them. You're talking about a hundred thousand pound in a kitty if the TV follow it. So I know it's not a big, big tournament, but it's worthwhile to get a wee run in it. Yeah, don't hold your breath for the fans getting back in, Ruffy. Um, Patrick Drums in Belfast, great to have you with us. Adam Ogilvy, Niall Kane, David McDivitt as well. Lots of people joining us uh, and giving us their thoughts. Uh, David Mitchell uh, and also Francis W as well. And, uh, of course, some people just mentioning. Uh, I found this in the top drawer, uh, Tam, and I thought I'd, I'd bring it out there. You know, a wee bit of the, the old Scotland, just to make Ruffy feel nostalgic. You've got your Barcelona on. Alison's had her hair have done. I don't know if anybody's... I don't know if you noticed that, Robbie, but Alice, Alison is cranking it up now. You know, last Monday, I just I just, I sensed there was a need to crank it up, Robbie, and she's responded big time. Yeah, she's think she's waited long enough for it. Uh, I feel sorry for her. You don't have to wait that long. Uh, yeah, yeah. Obviously, what, we... What's we, that around no, the right way, I say? No, I'm just saying we... we <laughs> During the shutdown, no, I'm just saying during the, during the shutdown, we could all cut our hair or our, 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 our daughters could cut our hair or we could cut it ourselves. But I think it's a different yeah. matter when a lady or a woman, you know, wants her hair done. It has to be done, you know, the right proper yeah. way. You can't, you can't short change that one. No clippers. <laughs> No, no, perhaps. Well, that's the point, no. Alice. Another thing, no zero another thing about it. I don't know if you noticed it, but that was Ruffy actually just walking on eggshells, trying not he to was. upset you. He was, or, or get, get, he, he was trying to avoid getting caught in some kind of misogynist statement along the way. Um, and, uh, I think you, the, the you, inference you, here was just you've looked rough as anything for the last couple of months, and I'm delighted to have your hair done. Yeah, can I suggest, Alison, mm. that only a woman could think that way from Ruffy trying to be yes, uh, yes. You know, positive <laughs> about it? But anyway, uh, lots to uh, talk about. Thanks to everyone who's joined us uh, along the way. Robert Rover is, as well, uh, who says it's a, ro- a rubbish draw for the Wee Rovers. Well, uh, William Murray's joined us, James Collins, Jonathan Donnelly. Uh, lots of us um, looking forward to uh, the, the League Cup when it gets up and running. Uh, incidentally, the Champions League draw, again, there's lots of draws <laughs> for us to discuss. 
discuss too, but the Champions League draw um, came out today. Uh, this is the extension after, of course, Celtic will play Reykjavik of Iceland. Uh, and here's how it is. Once uh, the 18th or 19th of August, if that tie is played and Celtic get through, then it's on to either Ferenc Varus or Durgarden uh, from Sweden, and that would be the 25th or the 26th of August. Incidentally, I caught up earlier with um, David Winnie. Uh, she played for Reykjavik on two occasions and actually managed them as well uh, for a short period of time. This is what he had to say about Celtic's opponents. I mean, generally, the champions are, again, at the top of the league this year. They control the play. Um, but... They wouldn't have you know that luxury when they go to to Parkhead if the game was in Parkhead at Parkhead. And um, I think the way they'll look at it and the way they'll play is sit, keep the game as tight as they can, and hope to hit Celtic on the break. If Celtic go about properly, a uh, professional man, I'm not doubt Neil Lennon will have them. Um, you know they'll have them properly um, um, motivated, shall we say, for this game. Um, it will pose no problems at all for Celtic. Yeah, so um, uh, David himself knows what it's like to play over there. I mean, they might be dominating the Icelandic league, but uh, Alison, this should be just a, a, a straightforward stepping stone for Celtic. It should be. You would expect them to come through this. It's once you start to progress it, you really feel like crank up. It's, it's a different beast this term to in that you only have one leg. You've not got a home and away tie. Uh, and I think there's a real advantage if you have just the, the, the Glasgow tie and that's it. Obviously, we're awaiting confirmation of that at, at the minute, but I think the anticipation is that it'll be a game played at Celtic Park and, and you would ex expect Celtic to go through without too many problems at this stage. Yeah, uh, Europa League draw has been made as well, of course, uh, Motherwell and Aberdeen uh, at this point very interested in what was happening. Let's have a look at their draw uh, to see how it all pans out. It's uh, Aberdeen, uh, as you can see there, uh, will play again NSI at Runovic uh, or Barry Town uh, at Pitodri on the 27th of August. Uh, and also Motherwell, uh, Glen Torren uh, or HB Tershavin uh, from the Faroe Islands at Fir Park on the 27th of August as well. So uh, that's what uh, they can look forward to. Let's hope they can get past those rounds, Tam, and get themselves some football, group stage football for Europa League. Certainly would increase the coefficient and really, I think, would give them a shot in the arm. Yeah, I don't th see any problems, Peter, with those ties. Um, I, I would expect Aberdeen to go through and Motherwell without any problems. Um, I think it'd be a real shock for, for either the Scottish clubs, including Celtic, to even contemplate getting defeated from, from those type of teams. As Alison said, maybe the next round will be diffi more difficult, but should be plain sailing for, for the Scottish clubs, at least in this round anyway. Yeah, OK, let's get into the meat and bones of the weekend football. I certainly enjoyed going to two matches. I managed to take in the match at uh, for part between Mullow and Dundee United on the Saturday. And on the Sunday, it was Killy against uh, Celtic. We'll hear from the Celtic manager, the Kilmarnock boss. We'll hear from the Rangers manager uh, <coughs> after that emphatic win over St Mirren by three goals to nil. First and foremost, um, the one thing that started to emerge over the weekend, of course, Aberdeen were not in action, Ruffy, uh, but eight players issued an apology uh, and then Johnny Hayes came out on Red TV to say that they had uh, made a mistake. Um, and of course, I read Bill Leckie's column in the in the Sun today. I thought he was right on the mark with it. You know, there were a few things after it that they were trying, uh, as if to try and justify their actions, and mitigating circumstances. But in the end, Ruffy, um, you know, they made their <laughs> apology, but it didn't cut any ice with the, with everybody surrounding football because of the implications of what the government did and how it could affect not only the people on the park, but so many different people who work around football as well, isn't it? Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I already made, gave my opinion on Friday night. I thought there should have been tougher uh, actions against them. Again, I don't think the SPFL uh, stood up to this. They could have made a, a really decision to, sh to send out to everybody else uh, and, and I would have taken the points off them. I really would have. I, I just I said, right, that's it. Because you've got to think of St. Johnson. The St. Johnson lost the TV money out of the game. They obviously had other things, prepare, preparation for the game and everything. So although it would mean hard on Derek and the club, uh, I think there was enough players there for that game 
you know, to be forfeited and uh, they just don't get the points, you know. But they're, they're going to be playing on Tuesday, is that right? The Tuesday night and then Celtic and Saturday. Yeah. Well, Wednesday no. and then, uh, and then yeah. Celtic. Yeah, yeah. The, whole, yeah. The, whole, the, whole, the whole thing has just been mismanaged. There was no, there was no, nothing sent out there to all the other clubs as, look, this is what will happen to you if your players go down this road. It, it, was, yeah. just, it was just making a... Not for me. Yeah, I must admit, Alison, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, I mean, they didn't play against St. John's, and that was the first part of it because of the government intervention. Um, you know, Hamilton on the horizon and then Celtic. I know Chris Boyd has mentioned sporting integrity, uh, but I don't want Chris ever to mention sporting integrity in football again um, in Scottish football because I just don't think it exists. I think that's a nonsense, and, and certainly Chris needs to have a long, hard look at himself for mentioning it because the last 20 years tell me there's no sporting integrity in football. First of all, sporting integrity is a loaded phrase in our game. I think uh, it, ha it has a whole backstory that goes with it. But to go back to your original point about uh, Aberdeen playing playing the game on Wednesday night without all these players, I actually think it's fair enough. It's almost as if you, if you had a half a dozen players who couldn't perform for you because they were hungover, having been out the night before, you wouldn't win much sympathy. I don't think this one's too different. Uh, I think there's been naivety on their part going out, uh, but I think it, it, it just it was real stupidity. And they're out through through their own actions. They're not out through a, a virus that they've contracted through organic <laughs> means. They're not out because they they've got a got a come all down with a vomiting bug or a flu or something like that. They've gone out because their their social life came to the fore before their professional life. And I think you have to cut it. I think you just have to accept if you play that game. Without eight first team players, you only have yourself to blame for it. And and if Hamilton go and take full advantage, well, that's just the way it is. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing about it, Tom, I know you were strong in, uh, on Friday with Ruffy on the fact you should take the points off them. I'm talking overall now about the apology that came in, which again, didn't cut any mustard with anyone. I mean, if they really wanted to get sympathy and try to get off the hook with it, Tom, why didn't Johnny Hayes and everyone just say that they were actually going into a pub to test their eyesight just to see if it was working properly? Because that's that seemed to work <laughs> a couple of months ago. <laughs> yeah, that did work uh, down south. Uh, famously, but no, no listen, I, I agree with Ruffy. I was I was strong on it on Friday. I don't think there's any excuses. Alice is spot on as well. You know, you've got to play the game without those players. There's no, you can't have an advantage in getting games put back and or cancelled because of your own stupidity. And uh, listen, the players have made have made an apology. As far as I'm concerned, it's finished now. Get on with it, and hopefully it doesn't happen again in any of your clubs because, you know, I think the outcry from even Aberdeen supporters, everybody. Um, has, has really condemned Aberdeen players for going into that bar. There was no need for it whatsoever. And uh, let's hope it doesn't happen again because it's there's a lot at stake. It's not just Aberdeen. It's, it's the whole of Scottish football and people's health. Yeah, absolutely. And Michael McClay saying uh, there's going to be a meeting, managers, captains and the Scottish government to obviously relay this message in no uncertain terms what will happen if Scottish football were to shut down again. And uh, let's hope the government don't need to get involved in that. Craig Governor, I like what you're saying. Craig, um, I mean, I understand where you're coming from. Uh, young guys, they've made a mistake, they've been punished, we move on. Um, Craig, we do, we do move on. And, and I, I understand where you're coming from. They made a mistake, yes. There is a punishment um, for it. Whether it uh, costs some of them their career in the long term, I don't know. These things take up a little bit of time and people never forget, uh, you know, we do move on, but they, they, they deserve the criticism that's coming their way, that's for certain. Uh, thanks for everyone uh, for joining us and, and offering up uh, their point of view on it. Reg Tate says they misunderstood uh, the complicated rules, lose the three points, but it's being overdone now. Yep, Reg, we're just mentioning obviously over the weekend that the uh, apology was made and our reaction to that. Um, as far as the Premiership results are concerned, um, well, Tam, since you joined Hibs TV, wow, just can't lose a match now. Surely the <laughs> Surely the title's in the bag, Tom. Listen, I don't want to get too carried away, Peter. You know, it's still early doors, but I'll be I'll be bitterly disappointed if Hibs don't finish in the top two. Um, you know, listen, there's, there's, obviously it's been a fantastic start for Hibs. Uh, and I think I think they've got to be looking uh, at the Champions League spot. No, no, I've listened. It's been yeah. it's been brilliant. Um, they've been great. The two games, I thought they were. A little bit fortunate to beat Kilmarnock, but certainly on Saturday against Livingston, they were outstanding. It was a very, very good Hibs performance all over the park. Defensively, they were solid. Stood up to Livingston's physicality um, and were very, very cl clinical in front of goal. Kevin Nisbet, a hat-trick. 
Christian Doyle's yeah. got the other one. You know, you, you've got your two strikers scoring, the two of them linked up superbly. Two big boys as well, two two guys over six foot. Gogic in the middle of the park, putting his foot in. Hibs looked a right good side and, you know, it was, it was, it was great to watch and it must have been great for the Hibs supporters to watch it uh, back home. But uh, tough game tomorrow night against Dundee United, but there's a real opportunity for Hibs um, the next four games. To, um, to really push push uh, up the league and, and try and get that th at least third place, um, get, a, get a good few points ahead of the likes of Aberdeen and Murrow. Yeah, um, interestingly enough, I was at uh, Rugby Park yesterday and one journalist turned around and said they've been suggesting Nesbitt for Scotland. <laughs> I thought, oh, we've, now, we've now completely and utterly lost the plot, Ruffy. I mean, I mean, we lost the plot when I interviewed Lyndon Dykes, you know, but uh, I just thought I'd, I'd enter into the joy of the madness of it all. But but uh, listen, we've just got to see how the whole thing develops. But a really good start for Nesbitt, though. He, he took a while at, um, at the Easter Road when I was watching him against Colm. Marnock, um, but three goals is good. It does the confidence, uh, you know, the world of good. Yeah, it doesn't matter how the three goals are. I mean, people will look at it and say one was a penalty, one was a tap in, and the header was a good header. Uh, but it's three goals. Uh, a guy coming out of a, a lower division, people would be doubting, you know, if he had that in his makeup to, to score in our league. So, no, good for the boy. You can see the relief in his face. And certainly if you've got a striker like that, as, as Tam was saying, if you get two strikers you know, can match up together, it's, it's fantastic, you know, if they're both scoring goals as well, because they just, they just sort of a feed off each other. But uh, I would like to change my predictions, and I don't think Ross County <laughs> and Dundee United will get relegated. <laughs> I had Ross County yeah. too. They go down. No. Listen, oh, I, I actually, didn't. No. <laughs> well, to be fair, uh, Scott Patterson, um, the former party Thistle assistant, who was a, I loved Scott as a player, um, just hampered by injury. He came into the stand uh, uh, watching uh, Killy for Dundee United uh, the other day there, and he was mentioning to me, he says, you know, Ross County, you know, great couple of results. And I said, yeah, I, I had them down to get relegated. And he looked at me and went, yeah. <laughs> Shows how much shows how much you know, you know. Typ <laughs> typical footballer. If you say something that you know a couple of games into it, it's all guesswork, really. But great for Ross County. Yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. I'm going to mention this to Ali because it's Alec Kelly. Alec Kelly is a regular uh, who posts messages. A big Rangers fan. His favourite second team is Rangers reserves, and of course, his favourite third team <laughs> is Rangers under 19s, which gives you a picture of how Alec operates in his mind. And he says strong words from Alison. Do you? Share the same opinion of Lee Griffith's stupidity of hosting a house party, which has meant he he now has to self isolate himself for a two week period. Yes, I do, uh, and I think it's it's an act of folly at a time when when he's already on very very thin ice with the club. I don't think he's helped either by the fact that people around him are, are keen to put it on social media. I don't think it does him any favours at all, but. But I think in isolation, it might have been one of those things that you could, you could gloss over. But I think when it comes as a catalogue of, of things that have come over this summer, then it, it just continues to, to keep him, or it continues to keep him on the, the wrong side of his manager, I think. I think right now what he really needed was to keep his head down uh, and just prove that he was getting back to fitness and ready to get back into the team. Now, I know that uh, Neil Lennon had said he had a calf strain or, or he had an injury and wouldn't have played anyway. But when you looked at that game yesterday and you're thinking Celtic at one point from, from January to March last, last the, earlier this year on last season, Celtic were flying with that 3-5-2 system with Griffiths and Edward. And the fact that it, they, they've not reverted back to it just now is because of Griffith's unavailability and I think that's a huge problem. It, it, it makes Celtic much more one-dimensional. I know Patrick Clamal is there uh, and could go in but it, it was proven, it was working, it was a it was a formation that was bringing in so many success and just the way that Celtic were playing, it, it was bringing results. So I think there will be frustration on so many counts from Lennon yeah. with regards to Lee Griffiths at the moment. Well, I did ask Neil Lennon after the game yesterday if uh, Lee Griffiths was actually fighting for his Celtic future. No. Um, the club are doing an ongoing investigation and um, I'm not convinced it's you know, a big issue. You know, So hopefully it'll be resolved in the next couple of days. If he's not fit, Pete, you know, he's got a calf strain at the minute, so he would have missed the game anyway. 
Well, let me be blunt about this. I don't think they'll they'll ditch him at all, Tam. And I, I've written about it in a column today, basically because, quite simply, the only way we get ditched if he held a rave party in his living room and put it live out on Instagram and uh, Twitter, because this is the season of all seasons. It, it, you know, all bets are off. He, he'll be in there because, quite simply, he needs him. Yeah, it doesn't. It does need him. Um, last night, we were just hoping that Lee Griffiths gets himself back fit and gets his his head right. And as said, Allison is correct. He's it's just been one thing after another. Really, he's not given himself a chance um, to get back into the team, get back in the manager's good books. Um, in isolation, it's probably not a big deal. But again, as Allison said, it's it's been a long list of stuff over the summer. So um, I think Celtic missed him yesterday. Who would, I mean, every Celtic fan would rather Lee Griffiths come off the bench than Patrick Kamala. Clamala, sorry, and I don't think that's an under underestimation of his abilities. So I think that Lee Griffiths is a huge miss. I think he would have maybe been in difference yesterday. And I think it shows yesterday as well that Celtic need more options up front. They need a striker. They need a striker to come in now because I don't think Clamala's the answer coming off the bench. Um, if Ed Walters an well, off day like he did yesterday. So they need a, they, I think they yeah. need another striker in quickly. Yeah, well, we don't want you to mention Stephen Fletcher too early because we, Ruffy and I have got spread betting at the moment on whether you'll mention it in the fifth <laughs> minute or the 25th <laughs> minute of the programme. Um, but to be perfectly honest with you, Ruffy, I was there yesterday. I watched them. Um, uh, they were bereft of ideas. Uh, that's the first thing. Uh, when they sit behind the ball, uh, I'm not making any excuses, and, I, and, and Neil Lennon didn't make any excuses for uh, the plastic pitch. They just weren't good enough. Um, they didn't have the ideas to break them down. A man to go and take a player on. Uh, I think you're a wee bit harsh on Klamala uh, at the moment, Tam. I think, uh, you know, this season he's got to try and, and get himself used to uh, how they want him to play. Uh, but the two the two or three things that were the glaring for me is I do think a Fletcher would add to it because he knows the Scottish game and he would have offered something <laughs> different. The one th key element here at the back, Ruffy, is you're talking about a journeyman and no harm to the boy, uh, Nicky uh, Kabamba is a journeyman. He's been around the lower English leagues and he ragdolled the two of them. They didn't know how to handle him. Uh, I mean, if it wasn't Christopher Iyer, it was Julian. And Julian's gift of a penalty was sheer lunacy uh, because there were so many players around uh, Kabamba that they had plenty of time to actually get the da danger away. But they had these 30 or 40 passes, roughly, in front of 10 men and the goalie. And they couldn't do anything with it. And and the other aspect of it, I think, is no harm to the boy. But Greg Taylor is is a, a left back that I think needs to go to the Tosh McKinley School of Crossing. He could not get one cross into that box. He couldn't shift it. He couldn't find an angle. And I also think his height's going to become a problem. So I've kind of nailed two or three things that I watched that Celtic side yesterday. And I thought, there are, there are problems there that they need to address quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I think there are a few problems, particularly away from home on that surface. I, 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 I thought Kilmarnock uh, got their tactics down to a T. Uh, I thought in certain areas they identified, just as you said there, getting about the two centre-halves, you know, rumble them up. We saw Livingston do it on numerous occasions. But for me, the biggest thing was let Celtic have the possession. Let them have the possession all they want in certain areas. But when they come into it, uh, the dangerous area, then that, then that's where we get men behind the ball. And for me, the, the it was very noticeable, McGregor and Christie, who for me are the two main engine rooms in that Celtic team, the boy Dicker and Poor just got in about them. They didn't give them a minute. They were on top of them. They were just banging them out the road. And they didn't like it because if you let these two have all the time in the world, they've got so quick feet, you know, and they make passes all over the place. And they, they are the energy in that team. And Kamala just stuffed them out, uh, and and that that was a disappointing thing. Yeah, great credit to Kamala. I thought they defended well. They they stopped the crosses at every opportunity. They were a joy to watch. I thought their defence deserved even more credit than Kabamba, who actually won man of the match. But nevertheless, a great credit also to uh, Alec Dyer, who was delighted with the performance of his team. We had a good shape. Defensively, we were good. Um, they didn't give us too much trouble. Um, they're a good side, obviously, as we know. But today, we were compact and, you know, we pressed when we had to. You know, we had a good good discipline about our, us today. And um, I think we deserved a point, at least. 
Yeah, I, I always I always like listening to Alec Allison. He, he, he speaks well. He, he had a tough job to come in and, and try and steady the ship and put his own ideas across because everybody would have thought he would have been Steve Clark's second in command all the time. Now he's a manager. In a strange sort of way, Alison, I mentioned today that Alec Dyer, while he's out there trying to, you know, put himself forward as a success and a man who is a good manager, I think he also, for a lot of people, a lot of people looking and, and, and looking at him as a, a statistic, if he can make a success of it, to try and emphasise the need for the balance to be shown in black managers given opportunity in football. I mean, he won't he won't be aware that he's flying that flag, but subconsciously that that'll be in the back of many people's minds about why people, sh you know, black people and ethnic minorities should be given greater opportunity. I think we would all agree with that. But first and foremost, the first thing he has to do is get results. Uh, I think he was the obvious successor to Steve Clark. Uh, when Angelo Alessio got the job, I, I thought he should have taken it. I, I thought he, he knows the Kilmar players very well. He had an excellent working relationship with them. He was hugely respected as a coach within the rugby park dressing room. And I think sometimes when you have that, it's the first foundation you have to build on when you already have the respect of your dressing room and you can go in and suggest a way that you want your team to play. But uh, I've been hugely impressed with him. I spoke to him quite a few times last season down at Rugby Park and I've spoke to him again a, a few times. I, say, I think he conducts himself very well. He's very modest. Uh, he's he's not been keen to talk too much about the, the Black Lives Matter and his particular role in it. He's the only black manager obviously in the top flight here. I think he for I think you can understand why you might not want to, to talk about it too 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 much in terms of you want to just go and get going and do your job rather than feeling that, that you're there because of the colour of your skin, one way or another. So I, I think the best thing he can do is go and focus on his job and, and see what he can do. But I think Comarico finished top six this season. I like the way they've, they've set up Kabamba, I thought was just such a handful yesterday for, for Julian and I, are, as you've touched on. And uh, and it's amazing what that can what that can do for you. The one thing I still think he's not solved yet is his goalkeeper. I still think, uh, obviously, he's, you know, Danny Rogers started at the, the weekend because of the injury. Uh, and I just wonder if he still has question marks over who might be his first choice there. Yeah, um, uh, interestingly enough, uh, on the Sunday as well, Rangers were in action against St Mirren. It ended up 3-0, uh, and we always seem to be talking about strikers uh, that are always on the back pages and, and at the forefront of everyone's mind. Uh, Thomas Jones says, nothing about Rangers winning 3-0 yesterday. Thomas, I'm not sure if you understand the structure of the show. We're trying to get through as many of the clubs as possible in the Premiership and, and get to all these results. Um, incidentally, Alec Kelly says, thanks for your reply. Hi, Ants, uh, there, Alison. I only support two teams, Rangers and whoever is playing Celtic. So, so, so there, there you are. That's good, that's good from Alex. I quite like that. We love a bit of humour. Um, so with that in mind, um, Tam, Morelos, suddenly, uh, you know, he's back in there. He scored two uh, and assisted with the third, although, you know, on another day, they might have given him the third because he put the ball in. Yep. Great performance from Alfredo yesterday. Um, obviously, his first goal, I think, and since February, I think it was. So, two great goals, two two great striker goals. Gets across uh, from the corner kick, gets up, great header. And then, the, obviously, the second one, great ball in from Barisic, and he taps it in. His all-round game, he looks as if he had a bit of hunger back yesterday, Peter. You know, he's putting himself about. He was shown for the ball. You know, he was back to his, he was back to his best, I thought. Um, obviously, they took a bit of criticism during the week from a lot of pundits, a lot of supporters, and uh, I think he answered it yesterday with two goals, and you can see him pointing over to the manager, Stephen Gerrard, um, you know, and, and, and it's great for him, it's great for his confidence, and it's great for Rangers that he's back in the score sheet, he's obviously got competition coming in, because listen, he's not left yet, everybody seems to think that Alfredo's definitely going to leave, he, he might not leave, you know, he might still be there, so as long as he's there, he's got to be scoring goals, because as I said, he's got Cedric Itten coming in, and, and obviously Roof as well, so he's got competition for his place. But uh, the Rangers supporters will be delighted with his two goals and his performance and, uh, and a very, very comfortable win for Rangers. They were, they were, were good yesterday. Yeah, and the manager, Stephen Gerrard, said he had a wee chat with his striker. Um, I think it's my fault. Um, I thought the all-round game was good. Um, I thought his fault was really strong. And, you know, when you've got that talent, and you approach the game in the right way, you know what's going to come when he gets another assist. It's two for the season. 
with two goals, but I thought it was all around play. Performance is in, never was. Yeah, sorry about the uh, the sound on that. They are not up to our usual standard, but I think you can tell just grasping what he was saying there that overall he's well happy um, <clears> with <throat> how he responded roughly. That's what you want from a striker. Yeah. You know, you, you get heavily criticised last week, and I think, to be fair and balance it, as Tam has there, you've got to give him credit when he can come back from that criticism. Yeah, then he had to have a word with him. You know, he had to pull him in and keep him in, in, informed of what's happening because uh, Stephen Gerrard has already said his head's been turned and his head's been turned because of all the speculation of uh, he's going, he's no going. So you call him into the office and you tell him the honest truth of this is what the club have have offered. It's nowhere near what we want. When we get the money we want, you will leave. And, and, and just that conversation itself must put him in the front foot and just go out and show everybody that you're worth the money that we think we want to get, you know. So it's, it's common sense. The guy's just got to screw the head and go out because the better he plays, the more goals he scores, then that club will say, well, maybe he isn't he a 12 million, maybe he is a 15 or a 16. So the more goals he scores, is the better for him in the, the all round for me. Yeah, and, and I think a wee reply there to uh, Tam. Christine Bartley says he's going nowhere. He's staying. We don't need to sell him. Uh, Christine, I think most Rangers fans would be delighted if he stayed. Um, it's as simple as yeah. that. But you, you can never you can never work out what's going on in the background, Tam. You know, you know, clubs are forever putting a spin on things and waiting for timing just to try and keep the fans with a you know as much information as they need, but not too much. Yeah, listen, we're not privy to the conversations going on. Um, obviously, Lil have been heavily heavily linked with Morelos, but there are clubs looking at him as well. So uh, it's not just Lille, sorry, um, that's inter inter interested in him. So I, I think all things looking going forward, I think that Rangers will be keen to keep him. I think it's a huge season for the club. Um, he's obviously back scoring goals yesterday. I think the majority of Rangers fans would want to keep him uh, rather than have the money. You know, you get him in there, you've got Defoe in there and the two two strikers have brought in. Great competition and uh, great firepower going forward. So, listen, if they sell him, then that's that's fair enough. But I think all the Rangers supporters would, would certainly want to keep him in, at the club this season. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, listen, um, the great thing about it, hi to Gordon Bruce who's joined us, uh, Thomas Jones as well, David Scott, uh, Stephen McNamara um, says everyone's got a price. Um, just ask Tam. Uh, so it's, it's, it's supply and demand. It's, it's get, the, get enough money. Yeah, absolutely. I think he's, listen, Tam, we'll manage to hold on to you. But that, Free! Him's, him's, t, him's TV wasn't enough. It's as simple as that. Uh, anyway, apart from anything else, um, give us your thoughts on Alfredo Morelos. Any other outstanding performances there from Rangers uh, players that you want to mention? Certainly Morelos has stolen all the, the headlines on the back page for the win. Uh, good win for Rangers, good win for Hibs as well. The two of them have started off uh, flying as well. Uh, and as I did mention there, of course, um, the other match that I attended at the weekend, Alison, was Motherwell against Dundee United. Uh, Dundee <coughs> United knocked the ball about well. Um, they deserved their win. Um, I think I don't want to take anything, dwell too much on Motherwell's problems at the moment. I've seen them twice and they've, they've kind of struggled. Um, but Dundee United looked good. The boy Luke Bolton on the right-hand side delivered a great cross for the goal. Could have scored himself. I, I think United look as if they'll be OK. Well, they've got off to a decent start. So far, I know it's early days yet, but I, I sometimes think if you, if you get off to a good start, it just psychologically it plays such a big part if you can kick on a bit. And I think that's massive when you when you first come up into the league, just to get your, your first win, or to go off to a winning start and to get points on the board and not to find yourself adrift after five or six or seven games and struggling because I think if you find yourself admired in that position early on, it can be very difficult to retrieve it. Uh, we also don't know how this season's going to go in terms of whether or not we will actually be able to fulfil all the games on the calendar purely if, if there's a second wave and there's any debate. So I think you would I think there's an additional pressure on you if you're if you're down at the bottom. You really wouldn't want to be in the mix if there's any threat of a of the league being called early because we all know that there's a, a precedent being set this year. Uh, so I think that maybe adds an extra an extra element of pressure this season. So I think getting off to a, a strong start is, is vital. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, Ruffy, talking about uh, strong starts, I'm just looking there at Ross County. Six points, two games. Mm. You know, what do we know? I mean, they could collapse. Ruffy's raging. To be honest about it. Yeah, Rob, <laughs> Ruffy is raging. But, uh, I mean, I'm looking at you. You've got to give them credit, Ruffy. I mean, this is the year where you haven't tipped Hamilton to go down. This could be the year they do go down. <laughs> yeah, that, that's probably what will happen. But, uh, no, I think there's a long way to go. But I think Alison's perfectly correct there. You know, there's another set of fixtures coming up. If you're one of the teams that haven't won a game in these uh, three games, you you could be nine nine points adrift. There's a lot of uh, amount of points so early on in the season. And for me, Motherwell's a surprise package. I, I thought they would have picked picked up where they'd left off, but no, the Dundee United and Ross County are surprising me. Yeah, Brian Kerr's on Facebook and he says, oh, look, the only people speaking about Alfredo Morelos um, on the feed there are, are Celtic fans. He says they're obsessed. And um, Brian, that's the joy of football. Everybody talks about what's happening back pages in the broadcast media on the radio as well. That's the, the joy of it, Brian. Uh, get used to it. Um, Paul Wallace, I mean, again, Paul Wallace, who might be a Celtic fan, says if they think they'll get 10 million or more for uh, Morelos, then they're deluded. Um, I think you might be deluded, Paul. Paul, because Morelos, you know, two goals and an assist as well at a time when the transfer window is open. Um, you know, Rangers will dig in there and try and get the best price they possibly can, Tom, if they do decide to sell him. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt they'll get 10 million. I think they'll get 10 million easily, to be honest. I think you're looking between 12 and 15 million. I think Rangers Rangers are in that, in that bracket. And I don't think they need to sell him. I don't think Rangers need to sell them. I think they've got they've got a few quid. They've just signed two players as well. Um, you know, financially things look look good at Ibrox at the minute. So I don't think there's any pressure to sell Morelos. Um, obviously, if the right bid comes in that matches the valuation the Rangers have got for him, then they'll be away. But until that comes in, um, I think he'll just keep playing away and try to keep scoring goals for Rangers. Yeah, just another point I was mentioning, I didn't want to dwell too much on the, the, the Motherwell issue. One thing that really did um, get hammered home at the weekend, I asked Stephen Robinson, Alison, about um, you know Jake Hasty. Jake Hasty came on the first half, he was slipping all over the place, clearly picked the wrong boots, uh, and time and time again get caught in possession with the ball. I'll tell you, Stephen Robinson's not one man to um, you know suffer fools gladly. He whipped him off, and then at the end, he absolutely hammered him and said... Hasty and a number of other players, you know, no time for that. He's off. Somebody else can come on and do the job. He clearly is not happy with the way Motherwell have started this campaign. I think you could sense his frustration in that interview. I watched it and uh, there, there were a number of players he, he mentioned by name, said that they, they weren't fit enough, they weren't up to it, and they needed to do more if they wanted to keep their, their place. And it, it's a kind of scathing assessment of the squad, but I maybe just wonder if there's been some upset just the fact that Stephen Robinson himself was on the cusp of, of going out of the club. I know he was heavily linked with the Northern Ireland job. He, he made the shortlist for that. I think he was also linked with the Hearts job. I just wonder what effect that maybe has on the squad too, uh, when at one point you're looking as though the manager's going out the door because I think the anticipation at, at one point in June was that he would go and, and, and you think... The squad, as you said, I know there's been some new additions, but the, the squad are playing the, the same style that they were last term. It served them well enough to get up to third. Sometimes it's just very difficult to account for not picking up where you left off, albeit that you've had this five-month hiatus from, from playing, but you, you would expect much more from them than what we've seen in these opening two games. Yeah, absolutely. Don't forget, uh, if you are uh, listening uh, to the programme as a podcast, because we have the podcast out Monday to Friday, uh, usually halfway through the show, uh, you'll hear a chinkle, chankle, chonkle, chinkle, chinkle, and that's Ruffy drinking a gin <laughs> and fresh orange. So if you're walking along and then all of a sudden you, you start to jump up because you can't believe it, uh, Ruffy's tried to buy some quiet ice for his drink while the show's on, but it's time for everybody to get your drink out and join in. Um, some was also inquiring about Leeds United's interest in Barisic. I think even Barisic has said he's not uh, interested in joining Leeds United. He's quite happy where he, uh, where he is at the moment. I think Barisic Peter. is actually really coming on to a good game. I, I like him. Peter, I think he's Rangers' best player by a mile. I think he's a terrific left back, honestly. I think he'll, they'll get serious money for Barisic. Um, he'd walk into the Celtic team 
That's for sure. He would definitely get into the Celtic team. And and, and listen, I, I I seen him yesterday. He's crossing. You know, he, he was going by people. He looks quick. He's strong. You know, he picks passes out. Good good crosses of the ball. We've seen it from Morelos' goal. Absolutely tremendous player. And he, he's been a brilliant buy for Rangers. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you 100% on that. Um, so we've discussed uh, most of the, the points with regards to the weekend in the Premiership. Here's the table. Here's how it looks. Are your team in the position they should be at the moment? Oh, there it is. The high bees, top of the table, flying <laughs> yes. high there, Tom. Looking good. Uh, uh, Rangers and Ross <laughs> Ruffy, if we'd said him, Rangers and Ross <laughs> County at the start of the campaign, you would have looked at me as if I was completely crazy. Yeah, um, I'm looking as if I'm p completely crazy at this moment because <laughs> I thought Ross County <laughs> were an absolute certainty. Uh, I, I just thought, I just couldn't, uh, it's a long way to go yet, but no, well done to them yeah. so far. Well, if you if you, if you read some of the posts on this, <laughs> <laughs> I just already say you're off. If you read some of the posts on the Facebook and YouTube, you'd think the league's over. We've only played two games. I mean, that's the joy yeah. of football. I'm I'm really looking forward to uh, Tam Dundee United against Hibs. That for me has got the makings of a cracking game on Tuesday night. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, obviously, I'll be covering it for Hibs TV as well. We're covering all the games. So, will you, no, what? Really you, 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 will you be there? Yeah, yeah. Will you, yeah. Wow! Rocky, Rocky he's, he's going to be there. I didn't know that. That's wow, Tom's going to be there for Hibs TV. That's incredible. Just in case you didn't think I was going. <laughs> no, it's regular no, stuff. Peter, now, isn't it? Peter, Peter, Peter will be a cracking game. Hibs were, as I said to you, Hibs were, were tremendous on Saturday. They could have scored six or seven, to be honest. Martin Boyle had a couple of great chances. Uh, they've got pace through their team. They've got a wee bit of dig. A wee bit of everything. I think Gogic has been a, a real, real brilliant signing for, for Hibs. He's, he's in there. He, he's against Marvin Bartley, who's a good player, physical player. You know, he really stood up to the challenge and put his foot in. But when he got possession of the ball, he could play as well. And uh, and then the Porteous and Hanlon were outstanding again. Two weeks in a row, Porteous and Hanlon have been very good. So Hibs have not lost a goal from open play yet. Um, both, both teams were... Unbeaten, so I think it'll be a cracking game. Hopefully, Hibs can go up there and, and, and take the three points. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, if they get nine points, he'll be unbearable, Alison. You know, the ideal <laughs> Hibs. The ideal he'll Hibs. Be, uh, he'll be going to Aberdeen Boozers so that he can go around and shake everybody's hand, run about and call them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, to be honest with you, even 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 when there wasn't a pandemic, Alison uh, Tam got in trouble for hanging around boozers when he played for him. So let's, <laughs> let's not get down let's not yeah. get down that road again. Uh, anyway, let's crack on because we always like somebody to get a pelt a, a few pelters on the program. Uh, our reporter Gabriel Antoniazzi looked at all the weekend games and picked the team of the week for us. Benjamin Seagreast made four saves en route to a clean sheet at Motherwell. Ross Millen was a threat to Celtic with his crosses from deep. Mark Reynolds scored the decisive winner for United's first three points back in the top flight. Paul Hanlon commanded the backline in a dominant Hibs display. Borna Barisic showed once again why his marauding runs and pinpoint crosses make him the league's best left back. Alan Power doubled up on Odson Edward, stopping a Frenchman playing. Gary Decker equalled his midfield partner, battling away all match. Daryl Horgan assisted two goals with crosses from out wide. Nike Kabamba bullied the Celtic defence all afternoon. Alfredo Morelos scored his first goals of 2020, but will they be his last? Kevin Nisbet showed his striker's instinct with an impressive hat-trick. Measure team of the week, Ruffy. Are you going to argue with it? Not one single Celtic player in it, and I think it's fully justified, Ruffy. Yeah, 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 quite right. Again, just the goalkeeping one. Again, I would have said the St. Martin goalkeeper had a very good game at Ibrox. Uh, it must have been difficult for him going back there, obviously being a previous uh, player with Rangers. So that would be one. Everybody else was spot on. Uh, I don't think anybody can have any complaints with any of the other 10. Yeah, Tom, anybody in your mind that you thought should have been in there? Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think Gogget should have been in. I think Gogget should have been in there yeah. uh, instead of the, one yeah. of the commandant boys. And I think that uh, 
possibly Christian Doyle should have been in there instead of Kabamba. But uh, no, I think uh, apart from yeah. that, not bad. Yeah, well, the minute the, I like Gogic. I think Gogic is going to be a real bit of steel in the middle. But once mm. you start quoting two Hibs players, uh, I'm just thinking you're ripping the back end out of it. By the way, you'll be getting <laughs> you'll be getting you'll be getting leathered on this program if you start showing any of your Hibs bias that you have to say on Hibs TV. You know, the minute you get cuffed six nothing and you go, it was unlucky for Hibs. The, the five other goals were offside. You know, we will be leathering you, McManus. So don't give us any of your waving the green and white Hibs flag. Um, anyway. Apart from anything else, um, Ali, what did you make of that team? Yeah, I thought it was fair enough. Uh, I was at Hamilton, Ross County at, at the weekend, and it was a fairly staid encounter. I thought it was pretty turgid for most of it. Uh, Billy Mackay played well for Ross County. They kind of took control of it in the, in the last half hour. Billy Mackay played well. And and uh, I thought Ian Vigers was excellent. Uh, I know he never had a, had a great time at Motherwell, but I thought he was excellent. He used all his experience at the weekend. But... But I think that that team is fair enough, and the fact that it, it it's quite unusual that you wouldn't have a Celtic player in it at all over the course of the season. That will maybe only happen mm. once or twice, but I think it was just reflective of of how limp and how toothless they were yesterday. I think there was a real lack of creativity on on show at Rugby Park from them, and and I think that's disappointing. I think sometimes you can you can lose a game or be held to points at times, but uh, but there's a manner in which you do it, and I, I, I think they created so little in the game, which is a, a, a definitely is a, a cause for concern. Yeah, absolutely. I was just looking there, and uh, Jason Cumming, uh, not not the Jason Cumming, but Jason Cumming, has said that, well, his language is a little bit choice, but the the essence of it is, does Tam want the full Hibs eleven in the team of the week? Well, yeah, the answer to you, Jason, is yes, if he could get away with it. <laughs> Possibly, you know, we're just not sure. We're just not sure. You watch him change over the weeks. What camp he's in, um, but nevertheless, <laughs> nevertheless, he's there, uh, and he's happy with what he's watching. Uh, don't forget if you are posting try not to swear on our speed um, because you upset a few people um, uh, my old English teacher Ruffy told me anyone who swears suffers from a lack of vocabulary and who am I to contest <laughs> with them it's, it's stayed it's stayed in my mind forever and a day so if you are going to put a point across please keep your language um, well within the parameters of decency and we'll try and read it out even though I did read out um, Jason's there I had to quickly edit it as we, I was reading it because there's a few expletives <laughs> but uh, he's unhappy with Tam anyway, who's trying to basically jimmy in 11 Hibs players. Um, okay, what about the predictions? What about the predictor? Has it changed dramatically? Oh, it let's, has. Let's, let's have a look at the scores to see how it's all panned out. Whoa, <laughs> look at that. Look at that. What Ruffy. a weekend. Oh, that is sensational. I mean, eight, eight points. Eight, I'm eight points behind him, Ruffy. You're five points behind him. Tam has just moved out into yeah. the front. I think I think we might have uh, you know a bit of a contest this season. Yeah, I had an absolute shocker. Uh, but Tam getting the correct <laughs> score. This correct score at uh, Ibrox obviously helped him along there. And that's what can happen. But uh, no, all credit to him. You know, I was I was nowhere near any of the results at all. Uh, bad weekend, that's all I can say. But uh, let's just move on, forget about it, and uh, pick yourself up and, and uh, yeah. don't go in a huff and just keep battling on. Yeah, uh, absolutely, I will do. Uh, Alison, do, do you, I mean, just out of curiosity, if the league were to be called now, would we have to give Tam the prize or... Or in, in the manner of sporting integrity, should we just should we just keep or should we just keep looking at the games and, and awarding points? Listen, Peter, we've just spoken about how dangerous it is for to fall behind early on. You're just you're not mm-hmm. making up that ground. I think uh, yeah. I think this is a big a big midweek for you. Yeah, absolutely. It's a huge midweek, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, and, I, and I think, Tam, it's going to change the twists and turns across the season, that, as Ruffy will tell you, is dramatic. Listen, are there are Europa League fixtures. If you've been, I mean, there's a constant feed of football, non-stop, all the way across uh, all the programmes. So Europa League fixtures, Inter Milan against Bayer Leverkusen, Manchester United against Copenhagen, Shakhtar Donetsk against Basel, and Wolves against Seville. And I think... You know, Wolves are obviously keen to try and win uh, that competition because suddenly, um, you know, Tam, they would find themselves uh, in the Champions League. And I think a lot of clubs are going to find over the next few years that 
English football is going to become too strong for everybody's liking. Yeah, yeah. Listen, it's just a, you know so much power down there, so much money. Uh, I think Wolves have deserved it. I mean, I think they've been playing for over a year now consecutively. I think they started off in the early rounds of the Europa League way back last year. So I don't know where their players are getting the energy from, to be honest. Um, if they go all the way um, to the final, they're maybe going to get a, a two-week two break and then they're back into the, the Premiership season. So there must be some sort of burnout with the, with the, with the Wolves players uh, going into the next season. But really good side. They've had pulled off some great results, obviously beating Olympiacos the other night. And, uh, you know, you, you wouldn't put it past them to go and win that, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. Um, listen, uh, just before we go, uh, Ruffy, there's always a worry when you get a legend who's appointed the under-23 uh, head coach <laughs> and then uh, two weeks later, suddenly he's the manager. Maurizio Sarri has been bulleted from Juventus and in comes Andrea Pirlo. I mean, that's, a, that's your worst nightmare when you see him coming in, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean it's that that's the way they operate over there, you know, that they have so much you have to be successful, you have to win something and uh and I think they all know that when they take the job. But I think the the, the bonus of it, I, I think they all sign about six year contracts so they know when they get bumped after a year they're they're heavily weighed in. Uh but no, uh Pierre will be interesting to see how he does. We all know he's an absolutely wonderful player. Let's see if he's a good manager. Yeah, uh, Alison have you read his book? I've not read his book, but my, my first thought was that it must have been some interview for that under-23 job that he gave. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. And Tam, as you know, great players don't necessarily make great managers, but boy, I mean, I loved him as a player. I hope he's a success. Yeah, so they are. I loved watching him, Peter. He was a fantastic player. You know, his ability was unbelievable. Passing short and long. You no know, elegant, always seemed as if he had so much time on the ball. Um, he obviously went to America the tail end of his career and played with New York City and he was, he was superb over there as well. So <laughs> I hope he does well. Um, and uh, listen, he's, he's certainly got the reputation you know, as, a, as, a, as a player, you know, as a manager. The players, he'll have the players on side straight away, but like everything else, you've got to get results. Yeah, um, Colin Ritchie, and I always like to read out, um, you know, uh, positive things and negative things that we get on the programme because that's the nature of it. It's all about banter, it's all about your opinion, and we don't mind getting leathered. And Colin Ritchie says, don't talk nonsense, Peter. The Spanish teams are quarterfinal semis or finals in Europe and have been for years now, by far the best league in the world. Colin, you have a good point on uh, Spanish teams uh, getting to the latter stages of the tournaments and winning them on with great regularity, but when you actually get to a situation where you have a billion pound deal and clubs like Wolves can outspend a lot of the top clubs in Europe, their dominance, if you'd listen to what I was saying, their dominance in European football is going to become a major headache and a worry to the rest of the teams in UEFA because they are outspending them, they're paying exorbitant amounts of money, roughly, and the imbalance um, will become all too apparent if you've got that financial muscle that other teams cannot match. Yeah, and we've already saw through Man City their ways round these things. You know the fair play rule. Uh, they seem to have an act. Brown you know, envelopes. Of, uh, yeah, hey, the way the money it. comes in and what they do. <laughs> so you know, I, yeah, uh, and and I, uh, am I right in saying that Wills and Man United uh, win? They play each other in the semi final. Think, well, there's a possibility. Yeah, I mean, no, I think that draw's done already. Uh, is that two of them won? Yeah, today. Yeah, I the, must have missed yeah, that. The, draw, the draw's yeah. been right through. Ruffy will keep you right. Well, that's yeah. well, well, it's well, the first time actually to run through the time. No, I'm, well, <laughs> the reason why. I mean, I've, I've check been, out, I've check been, out immediately. I've, <laughs> I've been with you nine years, so I'm now away to yeah. check it. Honestly, as I said to you, Tom, there was one day you came on a Saturday and rhymed off nine statistics on the show, and I nearly fell off the chair. I couldn't believe he'd put that much research into it. And Alison, I went off the show uh, and I looked at the statistics that he quoted, and all nine of them were totally and utterly inaccurate. So I'm almost I'm almost saying I think me had a think me wills smudger had smudger had a bad day that day because I've just copied everything <laughs> off his paper. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Anyway, on on that point, um, nevertheless, it's uh, 
it, it's certainly interesting that, that they've got that huge, huge amount of buying power and it could become difficult for other clubs uh, across Europe. It's certainly a worry at UEFA, let me tell you. That's uh, one thing for sure. Uh, listen, um, lots of football going on this week. Um, Alison, what game are you going to be taking in Tuesday or Wednesday for you? Hey, I'm not at a game at the minute this week. I'm at Hamilton again on Saturday. I've not got a game during the week. Uh, for us freelancers, we uh, we need the championship back up and running quickly before there's a there's a, an overspill of games where where freelancers are needed. So bring it back as quickly as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Now that you've said that to me, I think I must actually start to get you mobilised uh, onto some of the games for PLZ as well, Tam, because um, we've got to get out to as many games as possible, bring you as many interviews as we possibly can right across the whole of the season. Uh, if you download the app, you'll have it all at your fingertips. If you follow us on our website, you'll get all the news as well. And then Monday to Friday, thank you to everyone for uh, joining us Monday to Friday uh, live at four o'clock on our Facebook and YouTube channel because quite simply, if you like, share and follow us, uh, we'll be delighted. It's subscribing on the YouTube channel costs you absolutely nothing. And I might as well tell you, Tam, um, first signing uh, has been made. Um, we've crossed the T's, we've dotted the I's, we've got them on Wednesday and Friday and our new man uh, will join us on Wednesday's programme. So suddenly a signing has been made to strengthen the team um, and we always sign from a position of strength, may I add, Tam. So I'm looking forward to seeing your face on Wednesday. Well, as I said before, I hope he's not a striker. I hope he's a defender or a midfielder. Can, can I just say something to you, Tam? And I say this without fear of anybody contradicting me on this. If you had the midfielder that we've signed uh, for Wednesday behind you, you would have scored a barrel load for Hibs. Mm. Ronaldinho coming in. <laughs> <laughs> need, is he even special? Need, you know, well, just a minute, he is. He's, 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 he's a good guy. He can pick a pass. Is it fair to say, Alison, without giving the name away, that he would have created a barrel load of chances for, for Tam? Indeed, w w without question. And he, he chipped in with a fair few of his own, too. Yeah, yeah I absolutely. Remember one, one spectacular one at, at Wolf Street one day. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, a wee teaser there from Ooh. Ali. Yeah, I, I can tell you, and I can tell you right now, um, Ruffy, he scored a couple from the halfway line in Scotland yeah, and, yeah, in, yeah, think, and England. Yeah, I think I even know who it is now. I'm just wondering, will Tam meet him on Wednesday? Will he have to tune in? <laughs> <laughs> no, Tam will be here with us. <laughs> Well done, Ruffy. I no, thought I was getting bent. No, there's no, no chance, Tam. Got to keep no. you with us. The only, reason, the only way you'll be leaving, Tam, is if you start kissing the badge. It's as simple as that. We'll have none of this uh, on the programme. We're all trying to be as impartial and balanced as we can. Hugh Scott, uh, thanks, Hugh, for your comment there. Uh, thanks to Alec Kelly as well. Um, lots of people uh, taking a wee guess at it, but uh, join us on Wednesday for that. But join us tomorrow on the programme when Hugh McDonald will offer all his experience with us, with Darren Jackson as well. Uh, myself and Ruffy will be back with you. Uh, don't forget, like, share and follow us and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, we're also live on Periscope across PLZ Soccer's Twitter account too. Thanks to Ruffy, to Alison, Tam and from myself, Peter Marston. Thanks to you for watching. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit Arnold.